Yes, uh, my um, colleague and co-presenter on these videos, Steve Liddell, has got a big grant to study the chemistry of uranium. Chemical research is really quite expensive. You have to pay for the chemicals, the equipment, and the salaries of the people that do it. And Steve has been very fortunate to get a grant from the European Research Council, which gives grants to young researchers all over Europe because they were really excited by his ideas and decided he was one of the best researchers of his age in Europe. So we're very pl proud of him. And more excitingly, it's going to lead to lots of new chemistry of uranium. Uh, well, we're going to look at the fundamental chemistry of uranium because uh, there just isn't enough known about it compared to a lot of the other elements in the periodic table. And you would ordinarily compare lanthanides and actinides, of which uranium is an actinide, to the transition metals, that big block of 30 metals in the middle of the periodic table. But um, a lot of the big milestones that were made in transition metal chemistry, they were all made about 30 to 50 years ago, and uranium is still way, way behind in terms of our levels of understanding. So, um, well, certainly I think, and obviously some other people thought as well, that it's very important that we, we investigate these systems and actually understand what their basic chemistry is. What he's trying to do is to make new compounds of uranium that are potentially useful. And he feels that because of the difficulties in handling uranium, all the paperwork to deal with a potentially radioactive element, that a lot of people have been discouraged. And he has interesting new ideas of making compounds that could have all sorts of uses as catalysts, could tell us about bonding in a way that we don't know before, or lead to properties that nobody's predicted? Uh, well, most academics when we apply for grants we're asking for essentially wages and money to actually buy the chemicals to do the chemistry. So I've already got a couple of uh, uh, postdoctoral researchers in the lab, that's people who've already got PhDs and they're seasoned hands at what they do. And I'm uh, just about to appoint another one and then along with some PhD students in the lab we're just going to make interesting new compounds which have uranium metal bonds in them. So the uranium gallium complex, which we talked about previously, that's a good example of something like that. And we want to do that because we think by using metals as groups that bind to the uranium, we're going to see something really interesting in the nature of the bonding, uh, which is how the electrons are shared, uh, pinning the two atoms to each other. And if we see something really interesting in the bonding, that might give us a clue as to the really interesting reactivity that uranium might be able to do. Why is that good for the world? What are you going to do with these compounds and find if like, are we talking about? Well, we to... first of all, I better quench this just before it goes a bit bananas. So what just, are you doing? just adding water now just to stop the reaction. What's he got? How much money has he got? I think it is about a million euros. So it's really quite a large sum of money. That's one and a half million dollars. So it's a lot of money, but <clears throat> it's over five years and will pay for a good team for him to do his research with and so I think we can look forward to a lot more new compounds on YouTube. Yeah if it's a new compound uh, you have to prove that you've made it so we have lots of analytical techniques which can prove that the compound we say we've got is indeed the compound we've made and then yeah we'll write a paper on it uh, because usually these things are interesting and everybody in the scientific community should know about them and the way you traditionally do that is you either go to a conference and give a talk on it or you publish a paper in a scientific journal. Um, and eventually, all of these papers, they, they build up the level of scientific knowledge that you've got. And after a while, they don't just stay in journal papers, but they start to find their way into textbooks. And then that material eventually gets incorporated into what we teach to undergraduates. And basically, if you can improve the body of knowledge that you've got, you can improve how you think about tackling problems or come up with really novel new ways of thinking about how to uh, tackle the existing problems we've got. And it doesn't actually matter whether you're uh, pro or anti-nuclear. The fact of the matter is we've had nuclear power stations and weapons for over 50 years now. Uh, so there's legacies to do with waste, to do with that. So I would argue that the way ultimately we're going to solve these problems we've got, never mind the ones we might have in the future, is that if you do the research at the basic level and you understand the basic chemistry which underpins any reactivity involving these elements, then ultimately you'll have a handle on how to deal with these problems or approach them in a new way.